This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Thursday, the new Friday, December 12th. And today's pod is the best one yet. This is a T-Boy. The top three pop business news stories you need to know today. I mean, Jack, I'm no geometrist, but Madison Square Garden, <laughs> not on Madison Avenue, not a square. The arena's circular, yeah. and it's between 7th and 8th Avenue. Although we should point out from the Knicks game last night, underrated sushi at Madison Square Garden. Still, where's the garden? I was looking everywhere for this garden. We're going to have to ask a geometrist. We posted some highlights from our night at MSG on Instagram. And they were highlights. But Jack, the three stories for today's T-Boy, they're fantastic. What do we got on today's show? For our first story, the guy who shot the United Healthcare CEO has been charged with murder and he has gone viral online. Besties, this killing, it has erupted pent-up frustrations with the entire healthcare industry. For our second story, Louis Vuitton, the fashion brand, has acquired a hotel, a restaurant, and the most famous train on <laughs> yeah. Earth. Louis Vuitton is betting its business on the Orient Express. And our third and final story is the fastest growing coffee chain in New York by far. Motto Coffee, we dove in T-Boy style. Because Motto Coffee figured out how to scale the $3 latte. We didn't believe it, so we went there <laughs> and we figured out how they scale the $3 I'm latte. I'm caffeinated on a model latte. Right right now. We know what's in it. We found out what's in it. But Yetis, before we hit that wonderful mix of stories. I mean, fantastic mix of stories. I love this mix, Jack. I can't believe we're less than two weeks from Christmas. I mean, Jack, <laughs> you can almost smell the mistletoe out there. I can still smell my two Christmas trees. <laughs> but Jack, we should point out the hot new food trend before the holiday, it is in gingerbread houses. Introducing the Charcuterie Chalet. It's Charcuterie <laughs> Chalet. We'll go with any pronunciation, besties. <laughs> it's a food-based three-dimensional creation that's also shaped like a house. But instead of gingerbread, the walls are made of deli meats. And instead of gumdrops, it's decorated with gorgonzola. And instead of icing... It's more deli meats. There's actually there's salami on the top here. Okay. My dad would love yeah, this. The charcuterie chalet was actually invented by Aldi's, the German grocery store. And in this economy, charcuterie chalets are beating the gingerbread house. Because ginger prices are up 30% this year to an all-time high. But cheese prices are actually down this year. But it's not just prices. No, it's not. It's way cooler to say charcuterie chalet than gingerbread house. And it's just more fun to say. Just ask the muffin man. But when it comes to holiday-themed edible real estate... How? What about a little bit of cookie dough cabin, Jack? What about a Butterfinger bungalow? Would it kill us to buy a prosciutto condo? If we're going to disrupt the gingerbread house, yeah. let's show some creativity. Masties, you got a holiday-themed edible real estate idea. We want to hear it. Drop it in the comments. A yogurt yurt? No, nah, never mind. No yogurt yeah. yurt. No yogurt <laughs> yurt. If you're lactose intolerant, you may want to skip a story. Jack, let's hit our three stories. 15 years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, because we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. The show. For our first story, United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson was murdered last week. But this week, his killer has gone viral. Because the murder has pointed the spotlight on the entire U.S. healthcare industry. Now, yet is something Jack and I should let you in on. As business podcasters, we've noticed that it's always the true crime podcasts that have the most popularity, right? We've never totally understood why. Yeah. But now we do. Mm -hmm. Because America has a real-life true crime on their hands, and people are obsessing over it all week. In fact, when we were preparing for today's show, we did our headline hammer. We do it every morning. The top five articles on every news site are about Luigi Mangione. Luigi Mangione, the former valedictorian from a wealthy Maryland family, turned murderer. Arrested in Pennsylvania on Monday, six days after shooting Brian Thompson on the streets of New York City. Actually, just a few blocks from where we're recording right now, Jack. He's been charged with murder. And honestly, it should be an easy conviction. Right, right, right. Especially because of the latest news. And here's the latest news, Yetis. On Wednesday, police shared a 262-word handwritten note found on Luigi. It shows that Mangione clearly wrote down his plans for the murder in a premeditated fashion. Now, this note, besties, it is important 
because this note helps explain why there is so much controversy in the aftermath of this murder. In the note, Mangione refers to his murder as a symbolic takedown of the health insurance industry. Yeah, we actually read in the New York Times a police report about this note added that the suspect, quote, likely views himself as a hero of sorts who has finally decided to act upon injustices. Again, that's from a police report about this note. It turns out others view him as a hero too. Some are celebrating the murder, calling it vigilante justice. Okay, we jumped in T-Boy style. This has gone viral. There is merch being sold online with the three words, deny, defend, depose. There's over 800 products with deny, defend, depose available on Etsy yeah. as of yesterday. Those three words, they are a reference to the words that were written on the bullet casings from the murder. Those three words are technical terms in the health insurance industry. They're used to deny coverage. They're there to keep the cost down for health insurance and to boost profits for health insurance. Deny, defend, depose. So besties, this moment, it reveals shockingly broad support for violence against corporate America. That's why companies are rushing to beef up security for their CEOs. And it has also started a bigger conversation which is our takeaway. So Jack, what's the takeaway? Who are everyone in America with health insurance? For-profit health insurance was already a life and death industry. Yet yeah, America is exceptional in the world in a lot of ways. And one way is the amount of money that we spend on healthcare. We spend $12,000 per year per person. Can you bring on some context, Jack? That is double the amount of money that other developed countries pay for their healthcare. All right, everyone's got a healthcare insurance story. Uh, to have our baby in California, over $70,000. Covered by healthcare, 70,000 grand. That is 70, absolutely astronomical. Yeah, it is, it is. And the main reason prices are so high, we think, it's because our healthcare system is for profit. Other developed nations, they have more socialized healthcare to a much greater extent than the United States has. Now, for those who can afford it, you can get great healthcare here in the US. Yeah, you can. Partially because our industry is for profit. Personally, I'd rather have my appendix taken out here than in other countries. But also because the industry is for profit, you get health insurance companies who are incentivized to reject coverage even for their paying customers. And a person getting rejected for coverage, that usually doesn't make the news. But that can also lead to death. So right now, we have two things that are true. First, the murder of Brian Thompson was horrific. And second, the aftermath has revealed deep anger about our healthcare status quo. For our second story, LVMH, the luxury company, has jumped from fashion to hospitality. Not just hotels. Good point. LVMH is building a luxurious vacation train that will take you back to 1883. <laughs> oh, that is a lead. I like where this is going, Jack. Now, yeah, we should point out, Jack and I were just cruising down to the recording studio, Midtown Manhattan. Jack, the Louis Vuitton store looks insane. What's going it's on? It's under construction. So instead of scaffolding, yeah, yeah. they wrapped the building in coverage that looks like their famous suitcase. It looks like a seven-story tall suitcase. You got to see this if you haven't seen it yet. The building looks like a huge suitcase. Okay, that was an aside because we thought that was cool. <laughs> but that company, LVMH, is suffering right now from the big luxury lull. Prada, Gucci, Rolex, Dior, shoppers worldwide are buying less fashion bling than before. However, LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, the $400 billion largest of the luxury brands, has a plan. To expand to hospitality. Get this, Yetis. This year, Louis Vuitton opened their first cafe in New York City. They opened a restaurant atop Tiffany's so you can have breakfast at Tiffany's. They even bought a 100-year-old historic bistro over in Paris. Jack, did you go on your vacation? Mm -mm. Yeah, it was not possible to get in, was it? <laughs> <laughs> but this week, Louis Vuitton acquired a European hotel chain, making a major move into hospitality. Yeah, these rooms go for about a thousand bucks a night from Tuscany to Mallorca. Fontenil is the hotel chain that Louis Vuitton now owns. Forget boots, bracelets, and buckles. Louis Vuitton is learning room service, spas, and late checkout. Do not disturb. But Louis Louis Vuitton's hospitality bet that we're most excited about Ooh. is a train. It's a train. Because besties, Louis Vuitton just invested in the Orient Express. Yeah, that Orient Express. The world's most famous railway. Can I take you back to 1883? I would love to, Jack. Transport us. I'll change my outfit. In 1883, a luxurious vacation opportunity was created. Yes. Like nothing in the history of the world before. I'm intrigued. Go on. The Orient Express opened. It's a long-distance luxury train that went from Constantinople 
to Paris. That's right. Istanbul, the word, didn't exist yet. It was Constantinople at the time. The Orient Express train was made famous by an Agatha Christie novel. Right. Murder on the Orient Express. <laughs> I, bet, I bet they wish that was wedding on the Orient Express. Not great for business. <laughs> Not great for business. Now, that train doesn't operate anymore. Good After point. World War II, the new political map, it got too complicated to send one train. Like, the passports, it just didn't work yeah, out. It didn't work out. But that leads to the news. The hotel chain Accor acquired the brand Orient Express and Louis Vuitton just invested to revive the epic historic train. According to the Orient Express website, you can soon take that same train from Istanbul <laughs> yeah. to Paris. Not Constantinople. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, it's the same experience as you would have enjoyed in 1883. I mean, Jack, you can have tea time in the lounge car, dinner at the restaurant car, cocktails with the piano in the bar car while the train is rolling along. Louis Vuitton is going to help ensure that the train is exactly as it was with the luxurious accommodations of 1883. I mean, Jack, this is basically a cruise, but it's on land. <laughs> You'll have a really comfortable bed in a cabin that you can sleep in. You can relax in the other cars on the train. Yeah. But here's the key. Yes. You get to leave the train while it's stopped at a train station. Honey, we're popping off in Vienna. That's right. It'll stop in Vienna. You can watch the opera. Okay. And then come back to the train. All aboard. Before moving into France. Choo-choo. And Jack, that choo-choo is our signal. And it's time for our takeaway. Orient Express marketing team, if you're listening, uh, yes. yes, Nick and I will happily record a podcast from that train. We'll make it happen. But in the meeting, Jack, we are late for our takeaway. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Louis Vuitton? This is an industry-wide luxury pivot, from handbags to hospitality. Yetis, expanding from products to experiences, that's how luxury can double down on their core customer. If you trust Louis Vuitton enough to buy a $10,000 handbag, maybe you'll trust him enough to buy a $10,000 train ticket. <laughs> yeah, you know, luxury fashion sales, they're expected to slow next year, but luxury travel sales are not expected to slow. That's why Nick and I were able to count seven different fashion houses yeah. that are launching hotels this year seven. or next. Armani, they already have a hotel in Milan. They're adding two more over in Asia. Versace has a hotel coming to Dubai. Bulgari's building a resort in the Maldives, and Ralph Lauren is taking over an entire hotel in Jamaica. We're seeing the luxury industry diversify. Instead of just buying brands, customers can experience brands now. They're expanding from handbags to hospitality. Hey, Yetis, if you're a bestie, take a sec and hit that subscribe button. And like this video while you're at it. If you leave a comment, by the way, we'll read it. For our third and final story, Mato Coffee. It's the next coffee chain that you are going to hear about. Because Mato Coffee is blowing up in New York City, so we jumped in T-Boy style. They reveal the value of a simple, focused message. That's the lesson here. But yet he used to sprinkle on some more context. Motto coffee is crazy. Literally. L literally. Actually, yeah. Motto <laughs> means crazy in Italian. That's the Italian word for crazy. They're crazy because in a city that sells double digit lattes and $20 acai balls. Gets me every time. We both had breakfast this morning for like $50 at <laughs> Juice Press. Everything on the menu at Motto is three bucks. Three dollars for everything. Honestly, we didn't believe it when we heard about that business We seriously model. didn't believe it. So we jumped in T-Boy style. We went. What did you discover, Jack? First of all, I took CrossFit at 5.30 a.m. Humble brag. Yeah. You look great. 102nd Street on Upper East Side of I Manhattan. I said you look great. On the way back, I stopped by Mato, and I confirmed it. Yeah. Everything on the menu is three bucks. 97th and Lex. We went, a Yeti saw us, so we have an alibi. They saw us <laughs> doing this. The coffees, the lattes, the pastries, the cookies, even the protein power bar I needed because of my CrossFit was just <laughs> three bucks. Now yeah, we should point out there are up yes. charges, right? Like they're not going to give you the whipped cream for free. Yeah. If you add whipped cream and caramel drizzle on top of your latte, it's going to be three fifty or maybe even four. Or bucks. if you don't order through the app, then things are three dollars and eighty cents. But otherwise. This is the cheapest cappuccino you can find in the city. And here's the news. Mato Coffee has 30 locations all in New York City right now. But they're pitching investors to finance a major expansion, maybe coming to a city near you. According to Bloomberg, they plan to 10x the number of locations, from 30 to 300. Now, one question venture capitalists might ask is, eh, how can you possibly profit off a $3 latte in the most expensive city in the country? After all, just this week, Arabica beans hit their all-time high price. Frappuccino, it's taken half your paycheck. The way that Mato can sell $3 lattes profitably is their extreme cost focus. Extreme cost focus. And, and here's how, besties. Since customers order through the app, baristas can focus 100% of their attention 
on making macchiatos. Baristas aren't wasting their time standing, touching some touchscreen or managing your credit card swipe or telling you, hold your phone a little bit closer if you want to tap to pay. <laughs> they get to spend all their time making coffees and serving pastries. And each Mato location must be under 300 square feet. The one you visited, Jack, what was it like? It's like a walk-in closet. Yeah, you can't bring your laptop in because it won't fit in the store. Finally, they save money on the coffee itself. Yeah. They don't use 100% Arabica beans like Starbucks or Blue Bottle do. They blend expensive Arabica beans with lower-priced Robusta beans. As Mocha Joe would say, it's all about the beans. And they use cheaper beans. <laughs> they do. As a result, it wasn't the best coffee I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. But for a $3 latte that I can grab and go really quickly, uh, yeah, I think a lot of customers are happy for that. In this economy, four-star coffee is okay than a five-star coffee. I just need a decent to solid coffee <laughs> that won't waste time in standing in line. It's decent. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies who are scaling over at Mato Coffee? Mato's strength isn't a $3 coffee. Mato's strength is their clear message. Uh, yeah, we have covered a lot of coffee chains who are trying to disrupt Starbucks and Dunkin'. We've done it on this pod. Dutch Bros, Blank Street Coffee, China's Luckin' Coffee is reportedly coming to the U.S. But only Mato has the clearest message we've ever seen as to why you should choose them. Here's the message. Everything is $3. The simplicity of that message is an unmistakably clear communication to every potential customer. Everything. Three dollars. Dollar stores thrived for decades thanks to a similar clear message. Yeah, good point. Motto is basically <laughs> a dollar store, but three dollars. Now, Vazdi's in politics, a key to victory is a clear, understandable, and compelling message. Motto has that. Everything's three dollars. So the way we see it, Motto's real power, its real strength, its real advantage isn't three dollar coffee. It's a clear message that fits on a bumper sticker. Everything three dollars. Jack, could you whip up the takeaways for us for the new Friday? The man charged with the murder of the United Healthcare CEO basically confessed to the murder in a note. And the whole ordeal has revealed a deep frustration about our entire healthcare status quo. For our second story, LVMH has invested in the Orient Express, a historic marvel of luxury train travel. It's all part of luxury's huge, shocking pivot from handbags to hospitality. And our third and final story is Crazy Coffee. Sorry, <laughs> Mato Coffee. They're probably coming to your city soon with a decent to pretty good coffee for just $3. Mato's strength isn't the $3 lattes. Mato's strength is the clear message. $3 everything. We've said that a lot of times at this point. Everything. <laughs> $3 everything. Is that clear? You got that yet? But yet is this pod's not over yet. Here's what else you need to know today. First, we just got the inflation report, the celebrity of economic reports. For the month of November, prices rose 2.7% on average compared to last year. That's higher inflation than the month before, but there was other good data that the Fed is going to like. For example, gas prices are under 3 bucks a gallon for the first time since 2021. So stocks rose nearly 1% as inflation increasingly looks under control. And second, Trump named his nominee for the Federal Trade Commission chair. Andrew Ferguson will be much more hands-off than the current FTC chair. The FTC, it can approve or deny mergers and acquisitions. Good and the out. current chairwoman, Lena Khan, has aggressively blocked corporations for merging. We just mentioned one yesterday in the grocery industry. Well, the new guy signals to Wall Street, it's open season again. More deals are probably coming back. The one exception might be big tech, which he says should be reined in. And finally, open your phone because Apple just launched OpenAI's integration into iPhones. It's basically Super Siri. This was announced like six months ago. Yeah, it was. But as of yesterday, it's there. It's in your phone if you update the iOS. I don't know, full disclosure, this is Nick, this is Jack, and we, we don't, don't have, have iPhone. We have an old iPhone. Yeah, so we, we can't. I have a 14. It. Tell us what it's like. I, I can't tell you what it's like. You can only <laughs> tell you what it's like if it's a 15 or 16. I'll ask Siri what it's like. Well, you still have dumb Siri on your phone. So I'll get frustrated at Siri. <laughs> Now, time for the best fact yet. Yeah, this one whipped up by Jack and me because we still had a few questions. As we mentioned last week, Pantone's color of the year for 2025 is Mocha Moose. Mocha Moose. But, you know, we had, we had a big question when we first heard this. It's a brown color. It's brown. So yeah. is it named Moose after the animal? Yeah, a it? moose? It's basically the same color as a moose. Oh, uh, well, it's actually named brown moose as in the dessert moose. We should point that out. Moose the dessert dates back to 1750 in France, and the word means foam in French. It took 274 years for French foam to finally make it famous in the color industry. If you think moose is named after the animal, 
Not possible. <laughs> Yetis, you look fantastic today. And now that you finished today's pod, we know exactly what you should listen to next. And what is that, Jack? The best idea yet. Our second show. It's we our have second a forty-five show. minute deep dive on the Air Jordan sneaker. Yes. Wild story if you're a sports fan. Wild story if you're a fashion fan. Wild story if you have a mother. So besties, go listen to the best idea yet right now to enjoy that story, and then tell your buddies H Y H T B O Y. Have you had the best one yet? If you know, you know. By the way, we got a link to T B I Y, our other show, in the episode description. Three dollar everything. We got it. There. We got <laughs> Was, it. Is that a, did I get that? And before we go, a shout out to Yeti Claire Schaefer from just outside Boston, who's a legendary Yeti listening to her third episode. Happy 12 year anniversary to Bonavie over in Cambodia. And Colin Hartman, fellow warden guy Jack, buddy of mine, and Felicia, they just got engaged in Minneapolis, running a business, and he's turning 40, not too shabby. Happy birthday to William Leonard of Fremont, California. This kid was born on 12, 12, 12, and is turning 12 today. Don't round that up. And Dan Katz, our buddy over in Brooklyn, and Westchester, and Riverdale, and Germany is celebrating the best birthday yet. Happy 30th birthday to Michael Rainey in Huntsville, Alabama. And Helena Thevenin is dancing into her 11th birthday down in Prosper, Texas. Happy birthday to Kenny the Marketer Chenard in Huntington Beach, California. And Camlin Fan is celebrating a birthday while watching Interstellar in San Diego. And happy birthday to Corey Allen in Philadelphia who always has the best facts yet. And to anyone else celebrating something today, make it a T-boy. Celebrate the wins. This is Jack. Nick and I both own stock of Apple. Whoa. Olivia, what's the brick for? In case Nick screws up, I can throw it at him. (laughs)